This week uh, was the coaching staff's best chance to prove themselves, save their jobs. But with such a disappointing performance, um, have, have they put the nail in the coffin? Like, can they still save this thing somehow? And how, how quickly should the Bears move on if they should move on? Um, you know, I've, I haven't been a fan of this coaching staff probably from the beginning. Um, I've been a little bit more hard on them. Um, and Paulie's a little bit more on the, uh, you know, players Players take – a good amount of the blame as well, right? I've been a little bit more on the you can't put a player in a position that's not advantageous and then ask them to perform miracles. So um, I think what we saw with the Chargers game is back to what we can expect week to week with the Bears. And with what we've seen so far is, amazingly, it's like a 2-6 and six team, but somehow it feels like they're the team that does really well one week, really poorly the next, really well one week, really poorly the next. With that type of team, I would at least expect like a four and four record. And this does feel a bit like a four and four team, um, but they're just two and six. And what that to me kind of boils down to is final moments to prove uh, for a coaching staff that they just know what they're doing and putting players in positions to be successful. Because there's a lot of games in this season that personally I can put the majority of the blame on the coaching staff. And I think what worries me with like even getting new players and doing de trade deadline acquisitions and stuff like that. I don't, I don't see how you can be confident in a coaching staff that puts out such a lackluster performance on Sunday night football. There's, there's just certain teams in the league that, you know, there's search, certain situations they'd like to be in being an underdog team for Mike Tomlin. Um, you know, they win, you know, gambling numbers wise, they cover the spread. They'll always win. Um, at home as a home dog against, you know, a division opponent, things like that. I don't see a certain situation. I don't expect any type of game where it's not to me just like a coin flip game with the Bears. We're going to play at home against the Vikings. I have no idea what's going to happen. We could possibly win 27-13 or we could get dominated 40-3. to I don't – I have no expectations. You go on the road to L.A. and people are predicting an upset and then you get destroyed – so you don't know what to expect with this team. And what the, what I expect with that is just poor coaching, poor motivation, poor, um, poor preparation, you know, all those things that go into like a solid consistent week to week coaching staff, you would see that by now, right? You would see at least some sort of like consistent effort or intensity or preparation or game plan or knowing identity. I still don't know what the identity of this football team is by any means at all. Right. So uh, I'm personally, I'm done. I, there's really nothing I can see in the next 10 games that will save them by barring some sort of miracle where they just do everything the opposite of what they've been doing so far. Because what I expect the rest of the season is three or four really great performances from the coaching staff and probably six just complete head scratching, mind numbing, just giving away games that we should not have given away. So um, a unless they just completely fix it and they go on a roll and they go seven and three, eight and two, I think you just have to be done. I don't think there's any accountability on this team. I don't think there's trust. You know, the Allen Williams situation didn't help. You have guys in that locker room that know exactly what happened. They can't talk about it. They can't move on until these guys move on. And so the best thing you can hope for is just a fresh start and just some fresh air in that locker room. So I think they're done already. I'm not a person that likes to, give two years I, I i always i always try and go for that three-year minimum even with players um not not just coaching staff with players with coaches with with the whole thing i think three years is you know kind of a good amount of games to be able to sit there and see you know is this thing taking a step forward or not uh, I, I still think that there's more to prove there's still more season left i mean look at the lions how they finished their season if the bears did that There'd be a lot of excitement going into next year with this coaching staff. So, yeah, I mean, all you got to do is string some wins, and it's kind of what I always say. I, I like to put, you know, put more on the players. Yeah, watch Justin Fields come back and have, you know, one or two more four touchdown, uh, four pass touchdown games. I mean, that would sit there and excite the fan base. I mean, if you could develop some kind of consistency here, and if you could show you're, you're taking steps forward. I mean, the last time the Bears won back-to-back, we, I think you got to go back at least two years, right? So yeah, for us to expect them to do it with an undrafted rookie free agent is also kind of a little silly too. You know, that kid's look good in his own right, but at the same time, 
the expectations have to be realistic. I think if Fields comes back, which I know he's going to be out another another week, um, but if Fields comes back, this thing starts to roll again. They start to, you know, gel a little bit more and, and show some more consistency. Yeah, this coaching staff could definitely keep its job moving forward. Um, I don't see why not. Also, the opposite can be true, too. If they come in, they bomb the rest of the season. If it's still just loss and loss and loss and loss and more of the same, then, yeah, there's definitely – Plenty of reason to move on from them and look for somebody new, especially if there's opportunities with real coaches out there. So that, I think that's the other thing to look at is what kind of market are you going to have for coaches available? And I know a lot of people are excited about the idea of Jim Harbaugh. So, you know, that's out there. Uh, me, not so much. I, I don't think he's a for sure anything, but still, he's. I think he'd still be an upgrade over what we have. So, of course, that would be enticing. But I, I think, listen, you got, the coaching staff isn't fired yet. And um, last year we won three games. If we win five games this year, you can point to that and say we are improving. You know, and, and it's a valid, valid point. So, I agree with you both. Uh, there has to be some sort of consistency, and um, you can get uh, Montez Sweat in, get him acclimated. Um, obviously, edge rushers don't need as much preparation as, as, as others to put their hand in the ground and get get it going. Uh, but it is good that we did this trade. Um, we've seen the offense look a little bit better. Um, uh, the run game look a little bit better in the short passing game with Tyson Badger versus the Raiders. We've seen Justin Fields um, that you all just mentioned, uh, Justin Fields, two four touchdown games. Those are things we haven't seen at all in, in, in during the coach Everflus and Gessie's tenure. Yes, people, I'm sure, are going to be in the comments po pointing out the, the competition, right? But they're NFL defenses. We play NFL teams every game. So uh, whether they're bad or not or worse or not or whatever ranking they are, that's things that we did not see last year. So I'm not saying that it's immense progress, but it's good to see. And if we can start seeing more consistent fights, as was previously mentioned, uh, even if we win 5-6, seven games well let's, let's just say five games like you all mentioned if we win five games and every game we're in it like last year where we were one score games where we knew it was a talent that didn't carry us over right justin fields was carrying us big explosive plays keeping us in games and then we lose off of a bad play a turnover a, a young quarterback mistake or the defense giving up a big play or something at the end of the game so if this uh, as it, and, and just to kind of backtrack just a second uh, from what I said earlier, this trade or the trades kind of make me feel like they're going to be back at least one more year anyway. So to speak to the three-year window that was spoke of before I, I began, I believe that too. We do need three years to see because last year was a team with no talent. There was no additions, no roster improvements really other than Claypool. This year, you get a brand new team. I believe about 40 plus players are new. So now all of those players have to jail. Then you get the Claypool debacle, and then you get the Allen Williams debacle. And then you have to deal with that mess. So I, it sounds like a lot of excuses, a lot of this or that, but I feel like those excuses will be allowed, or they will allow those excuses to allow this staff one more season, especially if they become competitive, because that around this time was the time we became competitive. We became, uh, we were in the midst of, you know, higher scoring offense, uh, I think a four game run of 30 plus points a game. The defense just wasn't stepping in. And it seems like the defense are doing some things here and there, you know, versus, you know, lesser talent, obviously, than the Los Angeles Chargers. Um, their offense is pretty much elite, Keenan Allen, Eckler, Herbert, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the others, like the, Va the the Las Vegas Raiders, the uh, Broncos, the Commanders, you know, our, our offense looked pretty good versus them and their defense. Uh, our defense did some things. You know, the, the Broncos game looked like it was in hand, and I don't know what happened after that. <laughs> like, we, we had – that was a pretty good game defensively for three quarters. And then we fell apart. So it, you like, like I was saying earlier, there's some ups and downs and ebbs and flows where you're like, whoa, what was that? I didn't see that last year. So I believe with a maybe a back-to-back -back win, like you know, a two-game winning streak, and then maybe add a couple more games to 
two to four more wins, they do get brought back. Unfortunately, I'm kind of lower, much lower than I was last year. Um, I do like Everfoos. I do know that uh, he's done well as a coordinator, a defensive coordinator with not so many huge names sprinkled across uh, the, the, the defensive roster. Um, but they're going to get one more year, uh, especially if they do uh, pick up steam and, and get some good wins and look really competitive. But that is what we all are begging to see. Let's see something. Give us something. If you're going to keep them for the rest of the year and we got to deal with watching it, other than the people that are part of the tank committee that want us to just lose every game so we can have high picks, I think every Bears fan really wants to see some wins, some really good games. I don't want to sit on my couch uh, on Sundays and watch a debacle, a, a bunch of tomfoolery and bullshit. You know, I want to see some real com- competition. I want to see some uh, some hard hitting, some uh, flying to the ball. I want to see some good offense, and, and I want to see some wins. So I I I I, I don't really, I'm not co-signing them being back. But it just looks like there's at least one more year, like you all mentioned. You know, now having seen Tyson Bajant for two weeks, so we do have a little bit more of a, a healthy sample size to kind of analyze. Uh, Paulie, do you feel like there's any QB controversy in your mind for the rest of this season if everything's the same and everybody is healthy? 100% yes. And I'll tell you why. Uh, it's not even between Justin Fields and Tyson Bajant. It's between Justin Fields and Justin Fields. I have not been proven that he is the guy yet. And we're taking steps forward. I thought this thing would have taken bigger steps forward than it has. But, um, yeah, no, I, I need him to to show me he's the guy. And, you know, until he is signed to another deal, there is always going to be a con- quarterback controversy. If he's not the guy, then who's the guy behind him? And it just is what it is. So um, I think Tyson Bajan has so far done – well, for what the expectations of him are, in my opinion, all you could ever ask for a, a backup quarterback is four games at max and just win me two of them. If you could win me two out of four, I'd always be satisfied. You know, if you're asking anything more from a backup quarterback, I think uh, I think you're asking it just for miracles. Um, I don't feel like there's a, a, a quarterback controversy in regards to uh, Justin Field versus Tyson Badgett. Uh, I don't believe they feel Badgett is has won all of a sudden the quarterback of the future. Uh, there is a possibility that if Fields obviously doesn't play well coming back, uh, maybe like two, three games in a row, then you will probably likely see something brewing, some sort of bigger controversy. I think the controversy right now is media based as well as uh, fan based when seeing that one win from Tyson Badgett versus the Raiders, which I don't understand why people don't see that that's the Raiders. We'll see this game is going to really tell you what he's made of, not necessarily what he's made of for his career, but what he's made of and where he's at right now. In terms of the quarterback controversy, we're a very fickle town. And so we're going to see really like, I'm almost glad that Tyson Bajan gets the New Orleans game. Um, Just to kind of like, one way or the other, make it a little bit more concrete. Because I think the only way that this becomes a real controversy is Tyson Bajan comes out and balls out against the Saints. And um, realistically, I don't think that's going to happen. But if it does, I'm okay with it. Because what that does is it just kind of pushes the needle one way or the other a little bit more uh, concretely. Because if Tyson Bajan just comes out and throws out a mediocre, lackluster performance, now it becomes a real quarterback controversy. Because he's going to get benched. Fields is going to come back. And if Fields does anything other than ball out on that point, it's going to be 50% of the fan base wanting Bajan, 50% of the fan base wanting Fields to stay out there. So I would be okay with Bajan coming out and just having a 350 and three touchdown because it buys you time and lets Fields heal up. And it's a little bit more like, okay, well, now if Fields comes out and looks anything less than 350 and three touchdowns, now it's like, you know what? How about we just let Bajan finish the year out? Justin, you just kind of take it easy. We'll give you your fifth year option take another off season and yada, yada on top of the stuff that you guys already mentioned in this weird, subtle media campaign that apparently the bears are kind of behind, which this is just more rumors and speculation, but just kind of like, it it is a little bit weird about 
how much love and praise a undrafted rookie is getting for just coming in, like doing his job. And uh, that's not to say that in a negative way, because I love Tyson Bajan. And I said this to Paulie, I think the moment we saw Tyson Bajan, as of right now, he's probably the second or third best rookie quarterback in the NFL. And that's counting all the first round picks. So you have CJ Stroud easily being number one, probably Anthony Richardson. But I mean, the guy plays five games and he's out for the season. He got hurt every single game he played. Uh, Will Levis isn't doing much. And uh, Bryce Young looks really, really bad on a bad team. So Tyson Bajan doing more with bad stuff than, than Bryce Young is. So I'm happy with what you got out of the position. I'm happy with what you got out of uh, – out of an undrafted free agent. And I think this is a good person to have on your team moving forward, a good player. But in terms of it being a quarterback controversy this year, I don't see it happening unless one of the two players goes to an extreme. Bajan has to ball out or Fields has to really, really flop. If both of them just kind of tread water the rest of the season, you just obviously have to let Fields ride it out, see if he can figure something out and just fail. And then you can start messing around in the off season with, yeah, Hey, maybe Bajan takes his job in the off season and, in training camp or something like that. That's when you can actually start doing the controversy stuff. But if both of them are just mediocre, you just let fields ride out the season.